How's it going guys? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. This is PS Ready, my channel all about PlayStation. Real quick before I jump into it, I just want to give a quick game recommendation. It's only $22, I want to say. It's called Conscript. And basically what it is, is if you took the original Resident Evil and mashed it up with World War One, it is scary as hell. I've been playing it on my Steam Deck and it is an awesome experience. I just love giving indie horror a shout out here on the channel. So if you're looking for something new to play, I highly recommend checking it out. In today's video, I've got three top Topics to cover. The first two are very PS5 Pro heavy, but they're very real. The first story is that No Man's Sky's latest update leaked the PS5 Pro, like straight up. The second news story is that it looks like Sony is fighting back against PC with the PS5 Pro because it's expected to have some features that no graphics cards have at this point. Third on the list, the boss of Grand Theft Auto's parent company has just said bullying works, so keep doing it. And finally, we now know another secret to Sony's success, and it turns out it's just marketing. All right, let's jump into this first news story here, which has to do with the PS5 Pro. It's actually like two new stories, but I'm smashing them into one. So basically there's a new update for No Man's Sky that's completely redoing the way the graphics work in the game. It's gonna be a huge improvement. It's gonna change the biomes and everything like that. I like No Man's Sky. I just do this thing every time they do a free update for it where I re-download it, I start a new character, I get to the same exact point where it becomes overwhelming and then I get bored and fall off. I think it's cool that they've added in so much stuff over the years and as someone who got to buy that game early because there was a game store by where I lived in LA that would sell games early. To see where it has come in the past few years is absolutely insane. So like, I wanna give a shout out to the game. It's just not my kind of thing at this point. But with every new graphical update also coming to PC, also coming to Xbox, data miners love to break into them and see what they can find. And essentially what they found this time is the full graphic setting list for Trinity, which if you didn't know, is the code name of the PlayStation 5 Pro. Now the weird thing is, well, I mean, the obvious thing is that this like version of the game is clearly still in development because uh, if you compare the graphic settings for each game side by side, like the PS5 version and the PS5 Pro version, they're pretty much running at identical spec, which thankfully is high and ultra, but there's really only one or two different settings that have been cranked up for the PS5 Pro compared to the settings list for the regular PS5. Now that's not really surprising to me for a couple of reasons. We know that the big push for the PlayStation 5 is going to be 4K graphics, and if you look at the settings list, as far as I can tell, there's no resolution mentioned anywhere. So what I would assume is that it'll run at the same settings as the PS5 version, but then increase the resolution to a higher base set. I was able to find on Twitter that it's running at around 1700p, which is well above 1440p. I saw people saying that that's not enough, but I don't think anyone who would say that has ever played a game on a 1080p monitor, then plugged their PC into a 1440p monitor and seen the difference because because while going from 1440p to 4K isn't necessarily the biggest jump, the jump from 1080p to 1440p is absolutely insane. Like the clarity you get once you see 1440p will make you never want to play a 1080p game again. It's really that good. So going from around 1080p, which is where the PS5 version is at, all the way up above 1440p to 1720p, that's actually a massive jump. And I think it's gonna look pretty good on the PlayStation 5 and that from what I can tell would be without upscaling. So the native resolution would be around 4K, which would be honestly very awesome. I'm obviously this game is like a very old game at this point, even with the graphic updates, it's still not up to snuff with like a brand new next gen game, but it is a good looking game. So I think playing it at a high resolution will really help when people are playing it. But yeah, the real meat and potatoes here is that they straight up called out the PlayStation 5 Pro. I saw an article went up over the weekend on Insider Gaming, where it was basically called is the PS5 Pro still coming out this year. Kind of a nothing burger of an article. It was just basically like, yeah, the last time we talked about this, uh, basically all the documentation had the release date being around November. Nothing has changed from what they can tell, which is good. So I'd assume that that means the PS5 Pro is coming this year. And I feel like this update, having PS5 Pro settings built into it, really just backs up those rumors that we are going to see it by the end of the year. The real thing I'm excited for though, like I am excited for new hardware, obviously, because I love getting new, more powerful, powerful hardware, but they need to have games to go with it. I mean, it's getting pretty dire at this point when it comes to PlayStation first party games. And the more we get info that the PS5 Pro is coming this year, the more confident I am that they're saving big game announcements to go along with the announcement of the console, because how much sense does it make to announce a bunch of big next gen games and say, oh, by the way, we're also releasing a brand new console that's not only gonna run these games really well, but it's gonna run GTA 6 really well, and it's gonna be effectively the best 
best place to play that game because as we all know, GTA 6 is not coming to PC at launch. So yeah, big ups to No Man's Sky for just straight up confirming that the PS5 Pro exists. I know there's some people still hanging on to the belief that it's not coming. I don't think there's any real refutable evidence at this point that it is not coming. I think it is definitely happening and it's definitely happening this year. But yeah, that brings us to the second news story here, which is, but yeah, that brings us to the second part of this news story, which is that this new chip from AMD that they're going to use in the PS5 Pro not only is going to be much more powerful than the current PS5 chip, but it'll also have features exclusive to it. Like they aren't going to be available just yet on PC graphics cards, which is crazy. So if you read into this, it's very technical jargon heavy. Like I am a very like, tuned in PC gamer. Like I play a lot of games on PC. I play a lot on Steam Deck and I got the ROG Ally X, which is great by the way. Uh, I don't understand a lot of what this does. So thankfully there's some great articles out there. I think Tweak Town is the one that had the best explanation. Essentially what these features are built around is making ray tracing much easier. If you don't have a gaming PC, uh, you'll probably not know this, but ray tracing is kind of like a gimmick feature. You need to have like a 4090 or the AMD equivalent to really play games at a quality level and frame rate level that makes using ray tracing worth it in the first place. When you do turn it on in games like Cyberpunk 2077, for example, it looks phenomenal. And when you use upscaling features, that'll get you some good frame rates. But like even someone like me who has a 4090 PC, nine times out of 10, if a game has ray tracing, uh, I'm not really using it. The 10th game, the one that I do use ray tracing in is Forza Horizon 5 because it only affects the reflections on the car. So it's like no performance degradation to use it, which is why I even use it in the first place. So what this new like RDNA 4 system is going to do is basically enable much easier ray tracing. They've got a whole bunch of new technological processes and everything. Like you can totally tell, I'm sure that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about here. But the whole point from all the explanations I've read is that ray tracing will be much less expensive for the GPU on this new console. So you'll be able to see ray tracing in PS5 games outside of stuff like Spider-Man 2 and uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart at higher frame rates, which is awesome. I have my problems with Spider-Man 2. You all know this. I don't really like the story. I don't think it was as good as Spider-Man 2018 and a lot of the gameplay stuff like the web wings just straight up didn't work for me. I'm like, I want to play a Spider-Man game, not a super Superman game where you can effectively fly around the map. But I don't think that game gets enough credit for the fact that it always has ray tracing enabled. Like even in the 60 FPS mode, you have ray tracing enabled and it looks really good. I'm just hoping that with this new technology that the PS5 Pro is going to use, that other games are going to be able to use ray tracing because we have been sold on ray tracing since the middle of the PS4 generation and it is not materialized in any real or believable way, especially on console, but not even really on PC. Like when you can run it, it looks good, but the vast majority of PCs out there are not even close to having the right specs to be able to use ray tracing at an effective frame rate. But hopefully with ray tracing being improved on the PS5 Pro, the frame rates and the resolutions will still be able to stay high, like around 60 FPS, maybe 40 if you have 120 Hertz TV or something like that, because that's what I really want out of the PS5 Pro. 60 FPS, higher resolution than 1080p. Anyway, that brings us to the second news story here, which is kind of surprising to hear a game company come out and say this, but they're essentially saying that review bombing and bullying work. So this is coming from Take-Two's leadership team. If you don't know who Take-Two is, they're the parent company of Rockstar Games, the maker of GTA 6. And I guess in an SEC filing, they were asked about review bombing, and this is what they had to say. Um, they said, obtaining and maintaining high ratings of our games on the third party platforms on which we operate are important as they help drive players to find our games. Um, if the ratings of any of our games decline or if we receive significant negative reviews, that results in a decrease in our ratings, our games could be more difficult for players to find or recommend. Now, they're not like admitting in the cool way that bullying works, they're complaining about it, but what they're essentially saying is that review bombing works. So like when we hear from all these different websites out there that review bombing games when they do things you don't like doesn't work, here is the leader of the biggest publisher because they have GTA under their belt, saying that it actually does negatively affect the performance of their games and sales and findability, which is them admitting that review bombing works because the way to stop review bombing is to not do stupid stuff that causes it. The most like logical example I have of review bombing recently, if you don't really know what I'm talking about, is Helldivers 2. Essentially, the game came out in February and then like two or three months later, Sony came out and said, hey, if you're on the PC version, you're gonna have to start logging in with the PlayStation Network, which on its face, I don't really care about. I don't mind logging in with the PlayStation Network because PS5 is my main platform and I wanna get my trophies synced between my PC account and my PlayStation 5.
live, but obviously PC players were pissed because they don't want to make another account. And then there was another layer to it where a bunch of countries that they had sold the game in already don't have access to the PlayStation Network. So people were sold a game that then would not work when Sony implemented an online feature later. So obviously a big review bombing campaign ensued and it worked. Sony backtracked and they said, you're not going to have to use the PlayStation Network to access the online features in Helldivers 2, which is awesome. I mean, there's countless other examples. I know Assassin's Creed Shadows is caught up into this. Uh, Stellar Blade had a big issue with this when they started removing costumes that people wanted to use in the game. So yeah, we've heard for months now from the gaming press that this does nothing and it's a waste of time. But when you have the CEO of Take-Two Interactive saying that review bombing actually does negatively impact the game's performance, that's what's going to get them to make changes in the long run, obviously, because they're bringing it up as a chief complaint as to how their business works. Unfortunately, the review bombing for Red Dead Redemption 2 for how terribly they treated the online system in that game and, you know, GTA 5 for how garbage the monetization is in GTA Online doesn't seem like any of that has really worked. But, you know, maybe if you review bomb harder, you'll get what you want in the end, right? Like they're admitting it. That's a huge step in the right direction when it comes to the whole practice of review bombing and making it something to do to affect the way games are made. Anyway, that brings us to the fourth news story of today's video, which is that Sony has yet a another edge over Microsoft and it turns out it's just straight up marketing. This is coming from an interview in Marketing Weekly with someone from Microsoft and essentially what they said is that their marketing team is quite scrappy. And then about PlayStation, he said, regrettably, they outspend us. And that was insane to me to hear because I have been saying this over on Xbox Ready. If you guys didn't know, I go on that channel for the weekend video and me and Ray do a little bit of a podcast thing. So check that out if you haven't yet. Basically, I've been saying for years that Microsoft's marketing situation is just just like fucked for lack of a better word. It's not good at all. They release countless games into Game Pass. They do not market them. And then they throw their hands up and go, no one's playing these games. You can't expect people to just know about games and you can't rely on YouTubers to do your marketing work for you. And the same thing goes for the console. They don't advertise the Series X or the Series S anywhere. I watch sports all the time. I never see Xbox. I always see PlayStation. I see stuff like Horizon. I saw stuff like Suicide Squad, which is insane because of how bad that game was. I see stuff for Gran Turismo. I see stuff for every big PlayStation game. I didn't see anything for Hellblade 2. Even when Halo Infinite was coming out, like, the, yeah, they did some Doritos marketing and stuff like that, but I never saw TV ads or anything like that. There's a clear problem at Microsoft with marketing their games. And just like the Take Two story we just talked about, it's bizarre to hear them actually admit it because they know what the problem is and they're doing nothing to solve it. Marketing is always a weird thing to talk about because when you see big layoffs at companies, it's always marketing that goes first and there's like lots lots of studies out there that say that marketing doesn't actually matter, but then it does matter in very specific cases. And if you're not there, it's worth paying for because if you don't have it, uh, it's not going to work when you really need it to work. And yeah, when it comes to marketing, I mean, that's what really got me to buy a PlayStation 3 when I had an Xbox 360. It was seeing trailers for games like Uncharted 2 and then seeing the awesome commercial for Uncharted 4 got me even more excited for that game. And it's like, they have so many commercials like all the time and you never see anything from Xbox. It's like, yeah, no one's going to come and show up and play your games if you're not advertising them. So clearly that's the problem that needs to be solved here. But it's nice to see acknowledgement that marketing spending from Sony is helping them in their constant battle to finally, I don't know, overtake Xbox even more than they did the past two generations. But yeah, anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you in today's video. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.